This is the second day of our virtual Vacation Bible School here at uh, Pain Creek Baptist Church. Uh, for those of you that have tuned into the first one, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you will enjoy this lesson uh, this evening. We're going to start our lesson with uh, prayer, and then we're going to uh, I'm going to allow my wife Desi to start. And if uh, she has anything that she wants me to chime in on, I will. But uh, this is new to us. We're actually, I'm actually excited about it because I think it's, it's something different. And we, uh, we look forward to the rest of the week. So with that being said, let's have our, our opening prayer. Father in heaven, it's once again we come to say thank you. Thank you for watching over us last night and waking us up to see this beautiful day. We, we thank you for allowing us to be here to give this lesson and, and just give encouragement to some young person that they might want to uh, come to you in a better light and, and just be curious about what you can do for them. We ask that you bless the teaching, allow the Holy Spirit to be the leading guide in all that we say and do. For it's in Jesus' holy and righteous name that I do pray and ask it all. Amen. Guess I get to start first. And um, this is our Vacation Bible School uh, virtual lesson. And it comes from uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 12, which says, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickened all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate, witnessed a good confession. Uh, our lesson is about spiritual warfare for Christ. And um, yesterday we learned about freedom fighters for Christ from Missy uh, Piles. And um, Jesus purchased our freedom with his blood, so our sins are forgiven. Today we're talking about being a spiritual war. war Warrior. Warrior for Christ. Warriors are experienced fighters or soldiers. When you go into battle, no God will never leave you, Hebrews 13 and 5, nor will he forsake you. A spiritual warrior wants to help others. They should have love and compassion that goes beyond good. We are to be spiritual warriors for Christ. We are also to be examples for how Christians should live and treat and love others. We need to be trained. So when you go to church, listen to your teachers, people Amen. Amen. who want to teach you about Jesus. Listen to your pastor who has love and compassion for you and your soul. And that the scripture for that is Hebrews 13 and 17. That I uh, submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy. And let's see. he wants you to know that um, your reward is eternal life. And uh, when he talks to us, he tells us about the eternal life that we will have if we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Be aware that fights the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ. Put on your best training. Be ready to fight and defend what you hear and what you know about Jesus. Be a good warrior for Christ. Remember, God will never send you into battle alone. Do something. Don't just sit and do nothing for Jesus. Tell others what he means to you. Defend Jesus when others put him down. He died for us, for our sins, was buried and rose for you and I. But our sins will be forgiven forever that our sins will be forgiven forever. We will have eternal life with him forever in heaven. Be a spiritual warrior for Christ. We have the greatest commander in chief ever, God our Father. We are a part of his spiritual army. Trust and have faith in his word that's in the Bible. And I heard Missy say um, that uh, your Bible instructions before leaving earth. And I thought that was really good. Basically. Basic instructions, and I just want to thank God for all the children that are watching, and that uh, you share this with your friends and with your family, and uh, 
want you to be blessed and do great things for Jesus. And um, do all of this in the name of Jesus because he loves you. And he wants you to grow and uh, to understand what he has to say. That's just right. <laughs> okay. I'm going, I'm going to add to what she said about this uh, verse of fighting the good fight. Because it, it concerns a daily struggle. We know in this day and age that uh, for the young generation, uh, the kids, the young adults, and uh, the teens, they go through a lot of things that, that uh, this world is trying to get them to veer away from the, from God. So it the it's a concern. The good fight concerns the daily struggle with sin in the Christian life, and the hardships and adversity adversity in the ministry. Even uh, when you're with your friends, you, you can have adversity in, in how the game or game is played or just looking at uh, somebody and thinking, what are they really about? Are they, are they going to be a good friend? Are they going to be a troublesome friend? Will they lead me down the wrong path? The, the scripture that I like most of all in, in fighting the good fight is when, you're, when you have godly parents that bring you up in the church, then, you know, I, I 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, it troubled me. It didn't trouble me. It, it caused me to wake up a couple of times with this verse on my mind. And I thought that, you know, it, it, pays, it plays into what we are trying to get the younger generation to understand. When they have godly parents to teach and guide them, then, you know, Paul tells Timothy in verse 5, When I call to remembrance the unfreighted faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy mother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I, and I am persuaded that in thee also. To be a warrior for Christ, you have to have teaching, you have to have understanding, you have to have somebody to give you guidance on it, you have to have somebody that, that knows what it is to be a spiritual warrior. And a lot of families, their mother is the lead in that spiritual fight because the mother, you know, when I was young, my mother was at home. My dad was working. And she made sure that I went to church early in my life. So with that being said, the, the mother is the main conduit to a, a, a Christian family. They're the ones that, that will be there for the child and for the for the family and and just make sure that everything is is going according to what god has put in her to give to us to give to the children with with the teaching that a mother brings that a mother gives to the family to the children it it could be how to react to certain situations how not to react to certain situations we have, to, we have to understand that, that the mother, grandmother, that is biblically sound in, in how they live their life and how they run their house, then we have an opportunity for that younger uh, children in the family to grow and learn and, and make better decisions that will guide them in their life. So it says here that uh, an apostle of Jesus Christ, meaning talking about uh, Paul in verse 1. Paul, uh, he, he's, he's letting the world know that he is an apostle called by God. When he says that he's thankful for Timothy. In verse 3, I thank God whom I serve with my forefathers with pure confidence, conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, but mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. 
And then in verse five, the one that, that, that troubled me all night. When I, re, when I call to remembrance the unfraided faith that is in thee, he knows that his mother and grandmother prepared him for the work that he was to do for Christ. He knows that he had sound teaching. So when, when your mother says, come on, let's go to Sunday school. Let's go to uh, uh, vacation Bible school. Let's go to uh, Wednesday Bible study, prayer meeting. She is teaching you and making you a strong warrior. You're, you're to uh, be willing to learn and understand that they have nothing but good for you in mind. They want you to understand and learn how to make correct decisions in all that you do. So when, when your mother says, okay, it's time for church, it's time for Sunday school, it's time for Bible study, then that is, that is training for when you're out in the world alone and you're, you're grown up and you, you, you encounter people that may not know uh, good biblical sound doctrine or teaching, that you'll have, a, you'll have an understanding of what it is, what it's about, what it means. So when they say, let's go to church, get enthusiastic about it because it will, it will lead and guide you in the right direction. All you have to do is ask God for wisdom to make the right decisions all the day long. When, in the morning when you get up and you say your prayer for, and thank God for, for allowing you to see another day, ask for wisdom to make the right choices along the way as you, as you go about your day. And he will grant you and guide you because when you have the Holy Spirit inside you, then people see that you're different, that you are a Christian. They understand that and they, and they know that you have uh, sound principles that you live by. With that being said, uh, I think we did pretty good and And um, we also uh, uh, have a booklet that has a lot of activities in it for the youth to, to do. And um, it talks about the symbol of pride and strength and all American lady. This is talking about the Statue of Liberty. This is uh, not hearts for God and the spirit of God. And there's a puzzle. The good shepherd will help lead the lamb through the, the maze. And he is with you always. And I also uh, made a sword. I got this from my son way back in the day because when you go into battle for Jesus Christ, you always want to take your sword with you. And uh, this is real cheesy, but just, uh, just don't go anywhere without the word of God in your heart or with you. I've got Bibles everywhere. Oh, the sword is made out of just cardboard with aluminum foil and marker. <laughs> and uh, like I said, it, it comes in handy. But it, it, just, it just reminded me that when you go with your eyes taught as a young child, always take your sword and, or know verses. Learn, you can start with learning little short verses that, and just say it over and over through the week. Just pick one that, uh, that, has a meaning to you mm -hmm. and just repeat it and by the end of the week you'll know exactly where you find it like uh, Hebrews 13 and 5 about you are never alone you won't go into battle alone if you have Jesus with you and and God is just always there for us all right so now for the uh, teens it says pick an activity well the younger kids pick an activity out of your bag and uh, I thought the cross would be nice for the uh, younger kids and for the older, write in your journals. Now, what you write in your journal could be somehow that your mother, your father has helped you learn something from the Bible. And if this uh, lesson, especially in uh, 2 Timothy, the 
the first chapter, verse 5, if that kind of stuck with you, then put it in your journal. Start a journal of your, of your Christian walk so that you'll have something to come back and look at later on in life. With, with that, uh, we'll close with prayer by... <laughs> <laughs> Father, as once again, we thank you. We thank you for the moment we had to uh, put this lesson out here and, and just try to encourage somebody to make a decision for, for uh, Jesus. We know that uh, he stepped out of glory and put on sinful flesh to come and show God the Father in the flesh. We know that he died on the cross for us. We know that he was buried in a borrowed tomb, and we also know that his Father rose him on the third day with all power. Now, it's our, it's our duty to uh, pay attention to what it is that he has called us to do, to be ambassadors for him, to bring other souls into the, into the kingdom of God. We ask that you bless the teaching, bless the students that, that hear this message, and, and just be with everybody and build them up and just give them the courage to want to go out there and tell somebody about this wonderful man named Jesus who is able to save everybody from the sinful world that we live in today. In Jesus' name I pray and ask it all. Amen.